situation, I think now we have learned that you must pay attention to what is happening in other parties. Otherwise, you will not be able to plan properly. You must know that those who oppose you, you must know how they move, what they do, what they think, and how they plan their things so that you can plan ahead of them. And that was the whole issue, but it was misunderstood, but I'm happy that has passed. What has that passed? I mean, for many people, uh, it's good that you even mentioned it because it was something that was going to come to as well. If you start to question your loyalty no, no, to no, the party... No, because some people are not sophisticated enough in politics. They see everything simply in black and white. You must understand what you're doing. You must strategize. You must plan properly. In other political parties, they plan, in fact, 10, 20 years ahead of time. But in our case, it's only when elections are nearby that you find people planning things. No, you need to know those who are opposing you, the possible candidates that are likely to make impact in the areas that you are stronger and things like that. So uh, I guess nobody has a right in PDP to question my loyalty because I had been enticed, I had been invited, I had been cajoled and indeed intimidated to leave PDP, I did not at the right moment. When some of my colleagues, five of them, joined the APC, I did not. Only two of us out of our G7 remain in PDP since 2014, 2015 to date. So they like me to an eye. I like how you're bringing up these conversations that we're supposed to go deeper into, but I want us to take it once, one step at a time. When okay. you said at the time that Vice President Toshimbanjo was the best candidate of the APC, how did you arrive at that conclusion? No, one, let's look at this this way. I have been the chairman of Sir Amadi Bello Memorial Foundation. We've been inviting people that we feel should be able to contribute much to these uh, programs. Uh, we have an annual lecture to commemorate uh, his death on the 15th of January. And we invited him and he came to Kano. And indeed, something in short there, because there was almost a competition between Sokoto and Kano, who, where he was going to more so I believe that he has been doing very well. And I said to some people that, look, many of us observed that any time he acted, there appeared to have been some stability in the country. Uh, there appeared to be some confidence running around. And cool. So if you have a character like that, I thought the party would have nurtured him. And he has learned a lot. After eight years, no matter how dull you may be, after eight years in one place and doing something, you must have learned something better than somebody who has been out for a long time, you know. So, and he can communicate easily to people. Anybody, any time the vice president spoke, uh, I think people, no, nobody ever questioned what he meant to say or what he was saying. So, for me, those are some of the criteria for a leadership. Well, then, does it now suggest that with the emergence of Bola Metinubu as the APC candidate, mm. that the APC doesn't really stand a chance anymore in 2023? Well, I pray that they don't stand a chance. Coming from PDP, we will do all that is possible to ensure that we take over. Nigerians are tired of APC. And uh, Bola Tinubu, a good friend, uh, I don't think he should waste his time now. And I think he should reserve his resources for another thing. And I thought that it would have been better for him to have sponsored uh, younger people into this reign. He, he has uh, the governor of Ekiti Faemi. He has other people that he could have sponsored and relied upon. No matter what he thought he can do to Nigeria, these people will do it better. But that is beside the point. What, whoever he presents, for me being a PDP member, I will prefer and I will pray and I will appeal to God to make us defeat them. And he's coming. If you notice his outburst, if you will, if you can call it that, his outburst in, in Abekuta. I don't think any person can say in Nigeria today of 200 million people can say, this is my turn. No, it's never your turn. It is, even if you want to say it is the turn of the people or of your own people, 
Let's even put it that way. And then put what has happened, given all the uh, uh, ethnic groupings in Nigeria. The Northeast had never had a presidency. The North Central had never had a presidency or a civilian presidency. The Southeast had never had one. So even if there is a claim to be made, these are the zones that could make such a claim. But for you to think because you have helped somebody to be, and therefore it must be your turn. Agreement were not written. There was no evidence that that was an agreement that was written for somebody to say, it's my turn. If it is your turn in the APC, that's your own problem. But that is not for Nigerians. Nigerians will come to decide what is best for them, given what we have gone through. And you think that Atiku Abubakar is best for the country? Uh, I ask this because you had canvassed solely for him. You believe yeah. that he deserves to emerge given, as the give, candidate. Give Just a the second. Mm -hmm. you, you had canvassed for him and agreed that he should be the candidate. Now yeah. that he's emerged as mm -hmm. a candidate of the uh, PDP, are you convinced that this is his time to win this election? And beyond but, that, does his emergence satisfy majority of the party members as he stands now? Yes. The last part of your question, yes. He has satisfied majority. There is nothing that will happen where three, four, five people are concerned that everybody will be happy at the same level. There are people who might have uh, supported somebody and that now that he has not gotten it, might be sulking for some time. But if they are true members of the party, they will come forward. They know that there was no way in a competition of how many people that we know only one person will emerge. So we should always go to such competition in mind that, yes, the probability is one, win or lose. So. We have had the primaries, Atiku has emerged, and for me, given all the people that have contested in PDP, Atiku the most experienced, Atiku the most matured, Atiku now is not looking for ways to make this and that. He has already made it. All he wants now is to succeed where his name will be in the good history books of Nigeria. Therefore, he is going to be concerned with what the people want. He is going to be concerned with the security of the people, which is a fundamental uh, variable for governance, to secure the lives and property of the people. And I think that is one of the major issues we'll be concerned. Now we've been talking about the economy. The economy is in shambles, whether we want to believe it or not. The uh, our, our budgetary system is now just a routine matter. Nobody seemed to care either the implementation or even the conception of it. I have not seen anywhere where you have in, in a budget per annum where the deficit is up to 50%. So we need to look at all these issues. Our educational system, how many months now are so on strike? If, if the government cannot run the university properly, let's find a better way to do it and let's encourage the private sector and i'm happy that i see the private sector coming up with more universities in many countries now government can only give possibly grant in aid and in terms of the concern for many people to say don't take away the government hands in higher institutions you can do that if you provide the soccer for those who cannot afford I know that in many countries there are loans provided or guaranteed by government and given by the banks. So that it, any, no matter what the amount of money is involved, you take a loan, you pay your school fees, and then you have a moratorium, for example, six, ten years before you start paying back. And in many cases, when the government is good, it writes off such loans for such students that have taken it. So education is very important. Uh, These other issues that will come. Look at power. In, one, in how many months? Six months? The national greed had fallen. In other places, you don't rely on a national greed anymore. You, For example, let's take my state, Niger. Let's take Kebi State. Let's take Kwara and Kogi. We rely on River Niger. 
and all the hydro uh, uh, dams that are around. If we say this four states should be able to have Shiroro, Jabba, Kayenji, and uh, Zungeru dam that is coming up now, and those four states should be able to provide with this hydroelectric powered dam should be able to provide 24 hours light. Then we look at other state like Sokoto, Zamfara, Kebi, Katsina. I'm sorry, Sokoto, Zamfara, Katsina, and Kano. Solar system, the border, a wind system, and some other places like that. So that you don't have to say everything has to go the national grid and because of the wiring system, you generate, let's say, 10 megawatts, only about 8 megawatts reaches, and by the time you are transmitting, it's only about 6 megawatts that goes, even when things are normal. So all the things should come into play. And yes, among all those who are contesting, Atiku is it. Atiku should be the president of Nigeria 2023 if we want to progress. You know, there are concerns within your party about his choice of running mates. <clears throat> yes, the governor of River State has not reacted yet to uh, the emergence of the governor of Delta State as a running mate of Atiku, but there are those who say he was cheated. And he's been silent on it for, for, I am for many people. No, silence is golden. I, I, mean, I am surprised if the word cheated comes in. You have seen where that same person said he would never take the vice presidency. If I make up my mind that I cannot lower my ambition to a particular thing, then when, when I lose the presidency, is now I join the party to make sure whoever wins takes over. And I don't know, maybe many people do not know what transpired from the day Sakondos was humiliated out of office. Many things happened and many states are in trouble because of that particular action. I can give you that of my state. I restrained myself from creating another executive in my state because I know that will create problems for us. Probably by now, they will have said we have no candidate in Niger State if we had two ESCOs that would create problems. But that is what, has, what is happening in so many states. So the question of cheating, if I make an agreement with you and we agree this is what will happen, and I do not come forward to that, then you can refer to it as cheating. But you contested an election of how many people? Even if many people told you that you are going to win, even if by your arithmetic you, you confirm by your tabulation that you are going to win, and finally you do not win. I thought that the word cheat and other things would not come into play. And talking about the choice of vice presidency, you do not go around choosing people that will not compliment you. As a governor, you choose people that will compliment your office, people that are ready to take over from your office, people that are comfortable, I mean, that people will be comfortable with because it's a ticket. Yes, the presence of one or the other could affect the whole ticket. So it's important that Given the circumstance that we are now, we needed somebody that is amenable, that is intelligent, that is experienced, that has exposed, exposed himself as somebody balanced. Why, why do you think that Wiki does not compliment Atiku? Because unfortunately, I don't know whether it's temperament or is another thing, Sometimes when you speak so much, when you insult yourself or you insult your way to power, it does not normally happen. I can count many people who have been insulted. Either through some people who say, wait, well, he's saying his mind. No, there are certain times you don't say your mind. 
Does this tie back to the second issue which you had mentioned? Because you came close to accusing him of something, but you did not say what exactly it was. Accusing him of what? You had mentioned something about him and Secondus and how you were close to forming no, how, a parallel how executive. He, he, I know that three months to our convention, Secondus was humiliated out of office. And I, I can tell you that that was done because of pure ambition. By who? Get your answers. Are, are you saying that the River State Governor was responsible for that? He did say, ask, however, ask that any, he was he was any, okay with Secondus leaving office. He has not denied the fact that he was among those who wanted him out of office. So why you say ask, so why you, you say me? humiliation? So yes, humiliated because three months to a convention. If I, Moaz Rabangira Ali, nominates a person, and if I can use even the word impose because at that time we the northern leaders of pdp had decided in 2017 to have a southwesterner as the chairman of the party and about nine of them came out but suddenly Sakandus came and to some of us who know him he was both a state chairman national organizing secretary deputy chairman acting chairman. So for us, that's an experience that we needed rather than having somebody uh, pure and blue, you know. So three months to a convention, I will have been able to sit down with him and say, look, I am interested in something and your presence here may not help me. So I don't want you to run for the second term. Or whatever agreement that they had before of bringing him, then they should review it and say, because of this new thing that has come out, but not to humiliate the whole ESCO out of. For me, uh, if somebody was comfortable, many of us were not comfortable because we have set, if we are not careful, we have set a precedence Anybody with little money can come and create problems for us. I'll ask you a question directly. When you look at um, the ballot in 2023, yes, sir. and you see uh, an Atiku Okoa mm -hmm. on the ballot, and then Atiku Wike on the ballot, in terms of political structure and possibly uh, popularity with the public, who would you think? Somebody has used that word on me, popularity. There is a difference between popularity and notoriety. You can be notorious and people will think you're popular. So if my thinking, and I have worked at least in two conventions with Okoa, with this kind of personality and determination, I will think that Okoa will be it. There is no question about that for me. From the history with you and the governor of River State, it would seem that there is love lost between and the, both and of the you. main thing is this that I mentioned to you. It was this humiliating a whole ESCO out of. That was the reason. Well, Otherwise, your... we have never had problems. No, but then he described you as a mole. That's that's okay. Because? Because, mm -hmm. because of what? Because I said he was a dictator and he was trying to get rid of Secondus. And for what? For ambition. So, in fact, who should be more annoyed? Just because I said, you are trying to do this, you, you call me a mole. And I never re replied him back. And now, God has helped me to reply him back. And your reply is what? Huh? I thank God. Because somebody who will call you that, he gets there, what, what will be your relationship? And I told you about interfering in other states. He interfered in Niger so much that up to today, we're trying to patch our party together. So what do you mean? When you say he interfered in Niger state, mm -hmm. you were, you're no small political. I am it's... a small one when it comes to dollar. I don't have that money to throw around. So I may not be able to, and you know, the poverty, 
situation that is on now. So what exactly did Wicked do in Niger State that's really affected the Niger State PDP? Because it's clear that the we PDP had a is problem. struggling We had Niger a problem State. that we wanted to solve. And he took a side to slight me because of this issue. So if you want to count two issues. What was the problem? Maybe because you thought I was supporting Sakondos. That's all. No, I mean, what was the problem in Niger State that you were trying to solve? And what side did the, he take? There was an issue of the before the convention. We reviewed what happened in 2019. And we discovered the lapses. And many of the officers came forward and said, look, these things are happening. We cannot go on like this. And we came out with that. Unfortunately, the instead of uh, some people looking at it straightforward, they in fact turn it into almost like an ethnic thing. And some of us who are mature enough in the system refuse to behave the same way. Like I told you, if you had two escorts in one place, you will end up with so much problems. So some of us swallowed our pride and our whatever we think we had. And then suddenly he came on board, pumping them. In fact, when he came for the campaign at one time, he was talking about payback time. He wouldn't say that to me because well, there's nothing I would pay him back for. Did that affect your senatorial ambition? No, I didn't. I didn't contest senatorial. Well, you, were, you've always, you, when you were leaving office, you wanted to go for the senate. I, the, some people wanted me to go, but even then, I was a member of the House of Representatives in 1983, and from that experience. I said, never a legislature. The Southern leaders are not satisfied with the VP position that they've been given in the PDP. In fact, like, when described... you say Southern, who, what are you defining by Southern leaders? We have, uh, what I see as a structure is this. We have PDP, we have APC, okay? We have other parties in the South. That's one. Southern leaders, by the arrangement that, they, that, that we were talking about, maybe some of them thought automatically, since Buhari had finished eight, eight years, that it should go to the, the South. Now, that is not a constitutional. That is a more or less an arrangement for us, particularly when it started new and we started with a problem. You remember the Abiola issue, the June 12 issue. And to placate at that time, to reduce the tension, it was thought, let's start that way. So in starting that way, at the PDP level, still the North is in deficit of the timing. So I don't see any, even if you add together with the Buhari's uh, uh, period, I don't see why the problem if a northerner is selected. No, their, their concern, we, mm -hmm. their concern is mm -hmm. that the Niger, Ni National Nigerian Governors Forum, mm -hmm. including the Southern Governors Forum, had had meetings. No, not Nigerian Where Governors. it was the Nigerian Governors Forum. Across, no, wait, sir. Let uh, me tell you. Across what, parties. No, sir. Wait now. If Nigerian Governors Forum as a forum cannot talk about whether North or South, but some people, and if it is PDP that started that meeting of the APC governors and PDP governors, I will say that the PDP governors did antipathy. Because you don't sit down with your opposition to create this kind of problem that is imagined now. You as a party can struggle for whatever you think is right. They let them do their own and you see what has happened. Because it was not right for PDP governors and APC governors to sit in the same place to ask for that kind of thing. That is anti-party as far as it is the PDP that started it. But well, beyond anti you, 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 it would seem that you're restricting it to your party. That is how it, it should was, be. It was more about the yearnings from Nigerians. No, 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 no. Wasn't it? We articulate, and that is one of the reasons for having parties to articulate the interests of the people.
to bring it forward. But when you use it only for a selfish interest, because every time you should look at your party, what is the best for it to do? What is the best position to take so that you win election? What is the best way to package it properly for people to understand what it is, why they should vote for it? So you cannot go around dividing Nigeria into north-south as such. But now with the people, the southern leaders, some yes. members of your party mm -hmm. being concerned about the fact that it's not going to the south anymore. Are you not worried as to how, what effect this would have? I'm not worried in because we keep learning the process. We keep understanding how these things work. And if it is whatever it is that should happen, oh, God Almighty will see us through. You know, I'm really concerned as to what chance the PDP has in 2023. Mm. I say this because if I Google your name, mm -hmm. one of the things that pops up is the allegations of you no, yes. diverting two billion naira ecological fund for which you're trying, you're standing trial. We also have some PDP mm -hmm. leaders, governors at different levels as mm -hmm. well, standing trial. Even and those who have and crossed, you don't have, and you don't have any. I'm APC. about to say that even those who have crossed to the APC no, as well, standing even trial. Even the APC governors, because it's a new party, they are just about start. Those who won election in 2015 as pure APC, are now finishing in 2023. Where was the allegations, like... any time an opposition comes up, there will be allegations, more so some of us who can communicate with people to understand what we're saying. Where was more going... so for my position. Your Excellency, where I was going with this is this. Considering the 16 years under the PDP mm -hmm. and the concerns of Nigeria of mm -hmm. corruption under the PDP, oh, oh, oh. Why would Nigerians no, want to go back to that? If not that you are a journalist, I would have said you are a dancer, but you are not. I know you are asking the question to provoke an answer. The 16 years put every scale, every issue, and see what happened in those 16 years and what is happening in the now seven years. And corruption, I don't think anybody should talk to us about that anymore. Particularly knowing what every average Nigerian knows now. So please, allegation, anybody could be alleged to have done this, that, done that. More so when an opposition government is in place. So please, let all those allegations of who is where, who is where and co, when it is proven, we take responsibility for what has happened. Your party has sort of balanced its selection by coming up with a northern Muslim candidate and a southern Christian vice presidential candidate. The All Progressive Congress hasn't done that yet, and it doesn't seem like it would because of the kind of conversations. And it's raising reactions in the public space as to whether or not Nigeria is ready for a Muslim-Muslim ticket. If the All Progressives Congress goes with, an, with a Muslim-Muslim ticket, what impact will that have? Would that be an automatic ticket for the Even MDB? if it comes, then it may depend also of the personality that is chosen. Uh, people have been talking about the Abiola Kingibe uh, thing. Let us not forget that Nigerians then were eager for the military to leave the scene. So whatever arrangement or contraptions were brought forward, Nigerians will be willing to really do as such. But even then, if we go on real technicalities, uh, well, nobody would have known what the result conclusively would have been. But let's even give it that uh, uh, Abiola and Kingibi won the election. It won the election not purely because of the Muslim Muslim ticket or against it, but because the people were eager for the military to leave. So will that be the same with the little thing that has come up now, both religious and ethnic and co? Uh, I wouldn't want to advise even my enemies to say go in that direction. But again, we should begin to downplay these issues of religion and ethnicity. And that is why even the, the so-called zoning and what have you should be downplayed now. Let's look for the best. And not necessarily, unfortunately, again, the monetary thing, I hope that in the, as we go along, the electoral law and other things will take care 
of even the kind of monetary thing that is happening. Uh, if we, I was saying to somebody that if we continue with the way we have had that election and with the delegates, only the way they are now, uh, then the election of delegate will be almost like election of governor. Because I believe that a delegate maybe in Abuja, in one direction or the other, might have left Abuja with forty, fifty thousand dollars in one sitting. What will that mean? It means that we are beginning to monetize everything and we must be very conscious of that. It means also that good people, very good people that can have impact will not be able to join the system. What's your thoughts on the candidacy of uh, Peter Obi in the Labour Party? He was in your party Peter Obi, in the last my election. Good friend and a, a former member of my uh, of former governor's forum. And uh, a very excellent person, very, very excellent. Uh, his candidature in terms of the presidency, I think he will make some name now. Uh, if by that time we're all in love and around 2027, 2028, I mean 2027, 2031, he may be able to make it. But 2023, too early. Because? Because people, even though the young people might go for him, not everybody is, the, the name is not dropping in everywhere else for now. Because of the party? The party and himself too. He needed to have ridden the back of other people to get somewhere. But I doubt if Nigerians are ready for him now as a presidential person. I would have loved him as a vice presidential candidate. If he was in the PDP now, would he yeah. be the vice presidential candidate of Atiku Abubakar? Well, that is, um, uh, how do you put it? Not speculative, because that is something that we have already passed that bridge. But believe me, many of us, many of us were rooting for him. And even when he decided to come out, I had to ask him, are you doing this so that people will know you more? Or are you doing this for this? He said, look, we have the same leader, meaning Atiku. So I understood what he meant. And we went to Mina together. We went to see other people elsewhere, only for me to hear suddenly that he has left us. And I called him even when he left us and I said, ah, why are you abandoning us without informing us? And we were able to, he's a good friend of mine, no matter which party he goes to. You know, in 2019, Atiku secured 11 million votes, thereabouts, mm -hmm. with Obi on the ballot. There are fears mm -hmm. that without Obi on that ballot, mm -hmm. 11 million votes are not guaranteed to Atiku. I, what I did, and I had a course also to look for the statistics of the 2019 election. The vote of South East, which used to be about 4 million, the last election, hardly was it 1.5 million, but we knew what happened. The many of the states, for example, a state with 3 million voters, even those who voted maybe just 1.2, not up to 50%, every state you pick, you discover that the registered voters are different from this. Now, Southeast has a chance to pick, has a chance to either pick Atiku or Aswaji Tunibu. Even if they are to add their... Not Peter Obi. Even if they are to add their whole vote. You didn't ask me why Peter Obi left PDP. He didn't leave PDP just because he wanted to. He was virtually like frustrated out of it. Again, not by the party, but by other interests. If you get a chance, ask him, or after the election, ask him why he left PDP. Ask Omahi why he left PDP. Ask Ayade why he left PDP. 
So, please, let's get this thing right. Atiku will get more than 11 uh, million votes. And Atiku, by the grace of God, will win the election in 2023. Let's talk about these um, equity elections now. It's just been concluded. Yes. The Electoral Act was put to play for the first time since it was passed. INEC tried the electronic transmission of results. You saw how that played out. Assess the entire election and INEC's performance using Look, the electoral for me, act. At least the trial, the two things that have been brought newly, at least the viewers and the, and the electronic uh, transmission. And they have learned this. I believe they will perform better in Oshun as we go along. And I believe that before the election, we will have discussed thoroughly all these issues. But let's get one thing clear. Even though the past Michael go to INEC for maybe relatively are doing better than what used to happen. The parties, the agents must be conscious of one thing. Yes, electric, uh, electronic transmission. But there is still the manual job to be done. There is a manual job between screening the viewers and the transmission, the manual job of voting, of counting, and registering on the paper before transmitted on the machine. So within that period, anything can happen. That period of screening and the transmission. Why am I saying this? Because some agents, if they are not paid, let's say, let's take uh, three parties, Labour, uh, PDP, APC. If Labour Party is able to pay its agents well and the other parties do not, and the Labour Party guy is willing to give them whatever pittance at that time, they may be able to sign whatever. So that is what will go to the machine. In the presence of INEC officials. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. How does that work? Yeah. There are police, there are other security agencies, there are agents of government, there are this and that. That is why I'm telling you that we must find a way to sanitize our political process. The level of corruption and the level of poverty, and I don't know whether to add greed, has added to our problems. I'd like to believe that you are pushing for an improved electoral process as well. Yeah. So what you just mentioned requires a little more light on it and possibly and it could learn from it and anyone involved. When you say that agents could tamper with results yeah. at the polling unit Not level. Not tampered. Agents have tampered. In Niger State, I have seen polling station where the agents of PDP, because they were not paid their allowances, they were willing to write. Well, at that time, there was no viewers, there was no electronic uh, transmission. They were willing to sign whatever was given to them to sign. I'm concerned about the INEC officials present. Do they co-sign well, or I something think we like need, that? We need a lot of training, not simply to wait until election period. Both the NYSC that are involved and other ad hoc officials, they need a lot of training, a lot of training that will also emphasize on patriotism and the concern that, look, this is a real deciding factor for the country. You know, I think it's a concern that vote buying, based on what we heard from Ekiti State, we had, we had, we had um, Voters openly say that in the presence of security agencies, votes were traded. Yeah. So that's why when you are asking me in presence of INEC, we're all Nigerians. In other words, this is a collective thing that must start. All our leaders must come together. And when I say all our leaders, religious, traditional, uh, elected, and what have you, must come together to us to create an acceptable standard of behavior. Otherwise, this thing may escalate. We never had a very expensive primaries, both for APC and for PDP, like the ones we have had now. 
And if we are not careful, in 2023, it will be more expensive than what transpired there. And therefore, the minds of the people will turn election only into a bazaar of making money. So we need to come together and sit down. Look at what has happened. I, I don't want to think that that is the true what, when people argue that uh, the National Assembly were fighting with governors, that's why they created the situation where most of us who are statutory, or if you will, uh, they call us uh, uh, statutory delegates or super delegates, could not vote. Let me give you an example of Niger State. Usually we will have about 90, 97, 98 delegates from Niger State. But because of the electoral law, only 25 came because we have 25 local governments. So which means in Bayelsa, only eight came because they have eight local governments. So former governors, former National Assembly uh, leaders and co could not vote. The chairman of the party and what you used to have could not vote. I was going to question if it was good because it was supposed to reduce the costs of no, the process and also reduce the time to conduct the primaries. I don't know whether it reduced the time because you you noticed uh, the APC one that should have had about 7,000 or 4,000 or there. Yeah, about 7,000, they, they had 2,000 2, And yet, you saw what happened. The PDP one uh, from about four, 5,000 to uh, just 900 and something or there about, you also saw what happened. So in terms of time, that is immaterial because usually when voting is taken place, many people go to sleep and then come back after counting and things like that. But in terms of cost, still those people that you said were not going to vote. They led their delegates to the place. And some of them played the role of gatekeepers. So do your calculation there. Let's talk about your time in office. Eight years as governor of Niger State. Yes, what, when you look back, what, uh, what legacies would you say oh, I, that you left behind? I am very happy that every time I meet anybody from Niger State, very proud to meet his governor. And he will be telling people, even today, this morning, I found people who are hugging me, who are doing this because of the little things that we were able to do. First and foremost, once you are a leader, make yourself approachable as possible. Let the people feel they can talk to you. Let them feel that, yes, they can take care of their own problems if you can assist them. And I went to Niger State at the time I did, and by coincidence, by the way, I left as permanent secretary uh, establishment and pension. So I went and discovered a pension of 12 years of 20 years not paid, gratuity of the same not paid. And I made it a point because I know the value of salary that no employee will enter the next month without being paid. So I said 22nd to 25th, every employee of government must be paid. And up to the time I left on 29th of May, 2015, I had no problem with such payment, both pension and gratuity. When I went, I also discovered that Wayek and NECO were not releasing the results of Niger State students. Why? Because many of them, their parents could not pay. I took over. And I paid up to the time I left. I was doing that so that like I always tell people that many of us in our generation had what you can call free education in fact with payment to stay in school so we need to but I know now the population is getting larger and we need to be more innovative in how we do these things 
when I went, the university that was meant to be in Niger State, the University of Technology, I discovered that Niger State was almost third in terms of intake. I called the VC and I said, why will this be? And he said, question of qualification. I said, what, what can you do for me? He said, if you pay this amount of money, I will be training, we will arrange training for your student to be qualified. I'm happy before I left, Niger State came first in terms of intake. Health services. I built more hospitals. I renovated the old ones. I built bridges. I made sure that people follow the rules and regulations. And I just told you about the third layer of governance that we established. In fact, that saved me in the 2011 election because I had a lot of opposition from some people that felt that people like us should not be in governance. It should be people who come and say, rankade it, rankade it, you know, things like that. And uh, But that saved me because every, we have 274 words. And I made sure that every month I was given each word money, go and do what you want to do. Not me, I will not tell you what to do. In, in spite of what the federal government, state government, or local government will do in your area, you go and do something. So you want to renovate your church, do it. You want to renovate your mosque, do it. You want a culvert or whatever, do it in the name of World Development Project. And I was happy that even international uh, organizations are coming to study it because some define it as a real effort to reduce poverty and to make people responsible for their own actions. So the legacy, yes. I have been described as probably the governor that came better than the ones that left, that he, that he did not meet, and probably the ones that came after him. So, so far, so good. But I'm looking forward to somebody who can do better than me. Why didn't you want to go to the Senate, considering that it's you, almost a norm now that no, every governor leaves office and wants to go to re, go retire no, in the Senate? Maybe my background, uh, I told, I was a teacher, I was a civil servant and I, by God's uh, infinite mercies, I became permanent secretary. And the only thing that was remaining for me, and in fact, that was what I was praying for, to be head of service. I didn't know I was to be head of a state, you know. Uh, so for me, it's not just being or holding an office that is important. If you are a leader, you don't have to have that crown try to assist. And I, it, my nature is not commensurate, I think, with what I see as uh, in, in the legislature. Like I told you, I have learned, I have studied, I have written about it that, look, a legislator should not be involved in execution or project, but should pay attention. Look at what happened. If we take this thing that happened about the electoral law, each senator is given a chance to appoint five people on the on the minimum. Each member house of representative, I think three people on the minimum. And since you are a legislator, I expect if you cannot afford to appoint a lawyer, you should at least get a chamber that you relate with and pay them. Everything that comes to you, you should be able to give it either to a lawyer or to a chamber to look at it and advise you as to the benefit and implications of such a law. But it appears that in the rush, I, I don't want to believe that nobody read that thing to see the implication of that particular provision. I don't want to believe that. But no matter what it is, you can see what has happened. At the time, People were blaming uh, President Buhari for not signing in into law. But probably he saw the implication of that and must have drawn their attention. But at the time, they felt one kind, or the few leaders felt one kind. But what that tells me is that many in those chambers are not paying attention to the details of the main assignment that they have. 
There are concerns among the Nigerians, considering that there are projections that, say, in the next 10 years, we could have a Senate that's filled with former governors. Should this be a concern, or is no, it okay? I don't think so. You see, even if you have former governors, if they will stay and do the work, that will be fine. But where you have people who travel much because there is the minimum that you are required to stay, and some of them, in fact, they are not even paying attention to that minimum requirement, and nobody is doing anything about it. But whether this group of people or that group of people, I don't think that is material. What is material is, are they doing the job that they are expected to do? If you read our Nigerian constitution, each segment has been given what it is supposed to do. And while in the US now they are talking of competition for power, but we are thinking more they complement one another, the judiciary, the uh, National Assembly, or the legislature, and the executive. They should be able to relate very well to provide excellent services for the people. So it doesn't matter whether it is purely speakers of the State House of Assembly that are filling the Senate or the governors or whatever, but the people on the ground must be made to understand what a legislator is expected to do so that within their community they know the best that they can produce. Your Excellency Muazu Babangida Ali, thank you. Thank you very, very much. much for coming to speak with us on Political Paradigm. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, that's all the time we have on Political Paradigm. Thank you for your time. Remember to catch this episode and others on YouTube, search Political Paradigm, or go to channelstv.com. I'm Terry Ikumi. Goodbye.